الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين All praises for Allah, the Lord of the worlds, and prayers and peace be upon the seal of the prophets and messengers, our Prophet Muhammad, and upon his family, companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the day of recompense. In the last session, we began speaking about the beautiful names of Allah the Most High. We mentioned the definition, that we haven't been taught all of them, and their number is unknown to us. The virtue of enumerating 99 of them was to enter Jannah, some warnings regarding to them, their indications, and that enumerating them is to apply them in our lives by calling on Allah with his names and living in accordance with their implications as well as memorizing them, but not just memorizing them alone. Now the Sheikh goes on to discuss the deviation and heresy with regard to his names. He has divided this into three categories. The first category was making the creation like the creator. One way which he mentions in which the mushrikeen have deviated in this respect was deriving the names of their idols from the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like Al-Uzza from Al-Aziz and Manan from Al-Manan. Also deviation can occur in this category by making the creation, by giving the creation the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like for example saying certain imams have control over matter, or they have, they know the unseen, there are certain aspects, for example the final hour is only known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't know it, the angels didn't know it, their own, this knowledge is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for anyone to claim that they have knowledge of the, of the last hour or any other matters of the unseen, like the awliya and the, some of the imams of the Shiite, then this is deviation and heresy. The second one is likening the creator to the creation. And this is done by either takif in how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala performs an action, or tashbih, likening a quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his creation. Deviation which has occurred in this way, takif was how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sat on his throne. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sat on, a, a, on his throne in a manner which is suitable to him. However, some people have deviated and say, oh, he must have sat like this, or he must have sat like this, likening their own action, likening his actions to their own actions. Also in qualities, for example, mercy. Our mercy is limited. Our mercy is deficient, yet they have attributed the quality of mercy. They have likened our qualities of mercy to his perfect qualities. And it's not appropriate for, for anybody to do this. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect in all of his names and attributes and we all have deficiencies and imperfections in all of our actions and attributes. So, and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laysa kamithlihi shay, he cannot be likened to anything. He's not similar, resembling anything in his creation. The third category was of negation, which the Sheikh divided into two categories. The first category he mentioned here was partial negation. Okay, and this was to affirm the names but deny their meanings. So they say, oh, okay, Allah is a samir, Allah is all hearing, but he doesn't really hear. Okay, or partial negation could also be where they have affirmed some of the names, for example, some sects, they have affirmed seven of the names with their names and their meanings. However, they have denied the remainder. And then the second category is denying the names and their meanings outright. So they have denied all of the names and all of the meanings. May Allah protect us from this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us about his names and his qualities through revelation. And it is appropriate for us to accept and to learn from that revelation. There is one point here before we go on, which is how to protect ourselves from this deviation. Okay, there are four steps which Al-Uthaymeen mentions which 
people should take with regard to the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to prevent from falling into deviation. One is we, we derive the names and attributes only from authentic sources. If people bring things from their head, if they make up their own, if they derive their own meanings, then we say no, okay, we stop. We, we stop with the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. Second, we maintain all the obvious and literal meanings. Unless it has been explained by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa any literal and obvious meaning which comes through the, those, the Qur'an and hadith with regard to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beautiful names and attributes, then we maintain their meanings. Third, we maintain the perfect, absolute perfection for the names and attributes. For example, as we said, our mercy, our hearing, our seeing is deficient, it's limited. What we have is limited. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he sees, he sees everything, encompassing everything. He can see everything all at the same time. His seeing, his knowledge, his hearing is a hearing of perfection, of absolute perfection. Number four is maintaining consistency. The issue where many of the um, philosophers had with regard to the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was likening. They kept likening those names and attributes to our attributes. However, um, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says again, Laysa Kamithlihisha, nothing resembles him. So now we say, okay, we exist. Now you say Allah exists. Do we liken the existence of Allah to our existence? Or do we negate do we negate it altogether? No, we don't liken the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to our existence. His existence is perfect. He was from the beginning, the first and the last. However, ours is limited. We have a beginning. We will have an end. We will all die. Allah's existence is perfect. So to negate existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is disbelief. So although we don't negate the qualities, we maintain the perfection of those qualities as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed them to us. Okay, so those rules again in brief. One, we make sure that the information, the, the names and characteristics are from authentic revelation. Two, maintain all obvious and literal meanings unless explained by revelation. Three, maintain absolute perfection. And four, maintain consistency. The next topic the, the Sheikh goes on to mention are the qualities, the, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, which are divided into two categories. One, the attributes which are derived from his names, such as knowledge from an alim and and basr seeing from al basir the all seeing, and sama hearing from as samia the all hearing. And for every name, there is a quality which is contained within that name. Secondly, there are qualities, attributes of Allah subhanahu wa taala, which He has informed us of, or which His Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has informed us of. Of, of which names are not derived from, such as his love of the believers, or his hatred for the hypocrites, and his establishment of the face, which has glory and honour, and his two hands outstretched with spending, and the hand, and the eye, and the foot, etc. Okay, we'll stop here in this lesson and inshallah in the next lesson we will go on to talk about the meaning of some of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.